Lord have mercy. Something is wrong with my dishwasher. I came in here, y'all. Before I start telling y'all my family story, I'm going to make me a cup of coffee because my throat hurts. My throat hurts, but I want to talk because I ain't seen my girls in a while. I miss y'all. I come in here. Um, Felicia started my dishwasher today. I have no idea what she did. But it has an error code on it. So me and Chris turned it off, restarted it. I come in here to make my coffee. Guess what? It has an error code on it. I do not need my dishwasher to tear up. This thing costs too much money because it's a handicap accessible because it's all it'll fit in the hole. So I had to get a Bosch. I don't even know if I can get one this hot again. But anyway, uh, let's make a cup of coffee while we talk. Let me grab a cup. <sighs> so anyway, when I drink something warm, it makes my throat feel better, or I think it does. Man, uh, okay, you know I like the uh, coffee from uh, Aldi. Well, let me tell you this. If you want a good decaf coffee, and you really like strong coffee, this is the best decaf coffee on the market. Pete's. Now, it's expensive, so I buy it in bulk. And it's worth every penny that you pay. Now, if you don't like real strong coffee, don't get it. Or, you can always do what I do, so it's not quite as strong. And what I do is I put it in my coffee pot, and I, I use it, uh, you know, I put more water in it. So I do a small and a medium instead of just a large. But anyway, that coffee is amazing. Y'all got to try it if you drink a decaf. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you have reflux, a lot of y'all probably think that strong coffee is bad for you. The stronger the coffee, the less acidic it is. Believe it or not. So, the stronger you buy your coffee by the French roast and the dark roast and all that, because the stronger it is, the uh, more. I don't know why my brother's calling me. But I'm not going to answer it. Um, I'm hoping nothing's wrong. If there's something wrong, I've got a call from somebody more than just my brother. Because I would think if something was really wrong, it would be him calling me, my mom, uh, my, my daddy calling me, my brother calling me, my sister calling me. You know, that's what happens. So anyway, back to the story. What was I going to tell you about? When I met Chris, I was 29. And he was 32. And I hadn't been to church in a while. Okay? A long time. Matter of fact, we didn't start going back to church until uh, after we had kids, I think. No, it was before we had kids. But I was going to tell you, the reason I started reading the Bible, I was like most Christians. And, I mean, this ain't going to just be about Bible thumping, but I want to tell you about it. I was like most Christians that went to church, did my little Bible study every once in a while, you know, looked at the little pamphlet, sometimes the little uh, thing that, you know, the church has out front, but not much. I mean, I was a kid when I quit going. I was, I quit going to church when I was 14. So, um, my mother never sat around and read the Bible. I'm serious, never. I seen her read the Bible when she was crying and she was really upset and she felt like she needed the Lord. I never seen my daddy pick up a Bible. And we just didn't, you know, so when I met Chris, um, he seemed to know a lot about it, a lot. I mean, he knew way more than my mama knew, and she was a preacher's daughter. And um, so I thought, you know, I'm, I'm just going to start looking into this. Well, then I found out about Solomon, who was supposed to be the smartest man on the face of the earth. And I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I've always been a perfectionist, and I've always wanted to be the best at everything, and I've always wanted to think that I was smart, you know. Let me pour this out. And when I was 
was younger, of course, I was smarter. So, I got to read about Solomon and all of his smarts. And then I started reading, and it talked about how wisdom only comes from God. And the only reason why Solomon was the, the wisest man on, to ever walk the planet was because he asked God, would he let him be the wisest man, and God granted him his want or wish or whatever you want to call it. Let me get some creamer and this coffee. So, I got thinking about it. And then I got to read it, and it said that wisdom comes from the Word. And that, you know, the worldly wisdom is not wisdom. And I realized that I was quite stupid. I wasn't just not a little bit of wise. I was dumb. I was an idiot. Because to tell you the truth, I'd never really read much of anything in the Bible to amount to anything. I had never studied the Bible. I had never just read through the Bible. Yeah, I picked up the Bible and read Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus. And then you about that's about where you stop, you know. Or you might pick it up and you might read the book of Ruth or something like that. But, um, I mean, you know, I'd never really read the Bible. Did y'all see what all I just put in my coffee? I put creamer. First, I put powder creamer, two large scoops. And, yes, I know it ain't good for me. Then I put liquid creamer, sugar-free. And it's so sweet that it gets it so sweet so fast, you can't put much in it unless you want really sweet coffee. Well, I like more cream than that. So then I put in evaporated milk. And if you believe it or not, this is decaf coffee, and it's still real strong with all that in there. So anyway, let's go back in the living room. Whoop, 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 whoop. And I don't know the verses right off the top of my head. But let me just say that I figured out I wasn't wise. And I figured out what true wisdom was. So I started reading, and um, I read the Bible from front to back. And a lot of people are like, I just can't read the Bible. I just can't make sense of it. I mean, it just don't make sense to me, especially the King James Version, blah, blah, blah. Let me just say this. It don't have to make sense. Just read it. But anyway, I read it front to back, and uh, I learned a lot, lot, lot. And my faith grew like crazy. And uh, I've read it twice front to back. That's it. Just two times is all. And, um, but it's amazing what you will learn and how much faith you can gain by doing that. Just reading it. You don't have to study it. You don't, it, just reading it. And it, um, anyway, I just thought that was a story. I can tell y'all. Because I just thought I was the smartest thing in the world. And then I realized that I was quite dumb. Because I didn't know anything that the Bible said according to the Lord. You're not wise unless you, uh, gave it through him. And, I mean, there's there's stuff to it. Maybe I'll do my Bible study on that tomorrow. You know, the real words that Solomon, I just love Solomon. He was so smart and so rich, and he, was, he just had everything in the world. And um, how long did it take for me to read the Bible? I really don't remember, to tell you the truth. Um, I really don't. I would think maybe a... If you read it front to back and you really read it, you know, regularly, I would think a little over a year, you know, maybe at the most a year and a half if you're reading it, and maybe as early as a year, according to how much you're going to read a day. Um, but you do start from the front. You don't start from the back. You start from the front and you just read it. Another book I got that was unbelievable in teaching me the order of the Bible and um, why things are spelled out in history like they are and that kind of thing. Because I'm a woman and I'm not a history person. Now, I know some women are. My husband is such a history buff. I mean, he knows about all the different kinds of peoples and where they live and what their cultures are and 
uh, and then the Bible, he knows, you know, if they say that uh, Paul traveled to Rome and then, and then he came back to Jerusalem or something, I mean, they know exactly where that is in their mind. They know where Rome is on the planet and where Jerusalem is. I don't know all that. I mean, good Lord, I grew up in the sticks and never went anywhere. Let's see. Um, there's another book that I had. And believe it or not, it was a book I found at Dollar General when we were doing a Bible. Um, me and Chris were in, um, had a Bible, Lord of Mercy, Sunday school class. Oh, my gosh, I just love that book. And I gave one to my brother. But they don't, I don't think they print it anymore. But I'll try to find that book, too, in case y'all want to reference it. Because I'm going to tell you, it's better than any women's Bible study you would ever do. It teaches you so much about the Word and how it's laid out. And it's just so cool. And it helps you understand so much. I need to read that again because it takes you through, too, the, the different books. And, you know, that different books mean different things. And, I mean, there's so much to learn. There's just so much there. It's unbelievable the amount of information God gave us in that word, you know. Um, but I have to be refreshed because I don't remember. I don't have a photographic memory. I only remember parts that I really like or, or that really stick to mind. Of course, I know salvation, like, you know, the end of the world. But, but, I mean, it's hard for me just to recall, recall, recall like my husband does. Let's tell a, let's tell a story. I want to tell a story. What could I tell y'all? What's the name of the book? I'll have to look it up, Connie, because my head don't work half the time. And I got to, I got to fish it out and find it. I got it around here somewhere. It could be in the bottom of my um, bookcase that's right over there. But, I mean, I don't want to take the time to go look for it. But I will get it for you. It is amazing. I'm sure you could find it on, like, Amazon or eBay or Goodwill.com. Do y'all know that one of my cookbook books is on Goodwill.com? Somebody's already turned one of my cookbooks into Goodwill. And they put it online. What about that? They should put it on sale. They got it selling nineteen ninety nine. Why would Goodwill sell it for nineteen ninety nine? They should sell it for five dollars. Um. Anyway, I was gonna tell y'all a good family story. What's a good one? I got a story about my brother, my brother, my older brother, the one that's trying to call me. Is something else. And he, uh, him and Daddy went out coon hunting one night. And they didn't catch a coon. We had red bone hound dogs growing up. And uh, so they'd go coon hunting. And one night, Barry brought in a possum. He caught a possum. And he was going to keep it till the next day to give it to somebody to eat that he knew that would eat it. So he brings it in the house in a toe sack I hope y'all know what a toe sack is a toe sack is the sack that the feed comes in that looks it's made out of like a you know like a fabric you know some people back in the old days that didn't have no money had to wear dresses made out of that stuff uh, but anyway he tied that stupid possum up in the toe sack well, a possum has teeth the possum gets out in the middle of the night, Barry, I mean, they've been hunting late. They come in. Barry starts yelling, the possum's out. The possum's out. Mama was like, what? He goes, I put that possum in my closet, and it's not in there anymore. It got out. Yeah, burlap. And Lord, every one of us were up on top of our beds, screaming. Our feet were up, you know, we were afraid it was going to get our feet. And we were all sitting up on the beds hollering and screaming. And Mama was mad because he brought that possum in the house. Boy, was it some. That was a wild night. And I don't think he ever found the possum. I don't even know what happened to that possum. All I remember is Mama getting mad and I don't know what she did to Barry. She probably, she couldn't have whipped him. He was too big. 
And with that note, let me tell you this. My Granny Benefield, my mama said that she was dating my daddy. And she was down at Granny Benefield's house, which would have been her mother-in-law. But now Mama was just dating Daddy then. And uh, she said that Granny, that Daddy was at the table, and he smarted off to Granny. Granny told him to hand her his plate or something like that. And he smarted off to her. And Mama said she had a hickory up on top of the refrigerator and they were teenagers on a date she said that granny grabbed that hickory and started he started running and granny ran after him and he locked himself in the uh, bathroom and uh because granny was gonna tear him up and she would have but that just shows how my granny was she'd have whooped hers when he was a teenager on a date she didn't care if he disrespected her now, that's my Granny Benefield, and that's who I take after, my Granny Benefield. Uh, isn't that something? Hadn't the world changed? I mean, could you imagine me uh, getting out of Hickory and whooping May in front of her boyfriend? She would probably, we probably need to do more than that, really, but we don't. And I do have to say, for y'all women that might not think whooping's bad, I used to Hickory my whole life with my kids. There was nothing that scared my kids more into minding than a hickory. Nothing. Hickory's worked. If you don't know what a hickory is, it's a uh, switch. You know, you get a whooping with a switch. Chris got whoopings with a belt. He whooped my kids with a belt one time. And one of them had a mark on their leg. And I said, you will never use a belt again. I don't like belts. Now, they leave bruises. I don't like them. Hickories just sting. They might bring a little blood up, but it's gone the next day. And they sting so bad, that's all they need is a good little stinging. You know, they don't need to be beat. Anyway. Y'all are not talking to me tonight. I could tell you some juicy stuff, but I wouldn't know where to start. There's so much. Don't we all have a lot of that in our family, no matter who we are? I mean, if you live in a family that's been perfect, all I got to say is bless your heart. You're, you're very blessed. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't know of a family that doesn't have problems, you know, and scars and things that happen to them. Velda says it's bad when you have to pick your own hickory. Yes, it is. And we've all had to do it, haven't we? No, ma'am. Don't you start barking. Mama had a favorite tree she picked hickories off of. So Mama would pick hickories off the tree that was out back. It was a young tree, so the um, hickories were, you know, nice. They weren't too big, and they were just perfect. But we all have stuff that, you know, happened or does happen, and I don't know of one family. I don't. I don't know of one family out there, not an extended, not a real extended family, let's just say your immediate family, first cousins and their kids. I don't know of one family that doesn't have some drugs in it, somebody that's on drugs, somebody that is an alcoholic, somebody that gambles, um, somebody that sleeps around, I mean womanizer, or, if, or a man, I mean there's women that do. Uh, I mean, not that those are just the most horrible things in the world, but I'm just saying, uh, every family has stuff. That's part of being human. That's part of being, um, on the planet. That's why we needed Jesus Christ, because we ain't perfect. How me and Chris met? Okay. Let's see. Me and Chris were set up on a blind date. Yep. My first cousin... The one that my uh, daughter's working for at Big and Biscuits. He fished with Chris with the, in a fishing uh, bass pro shop, uh, like a club, and they would go out fishing. And then uh, Chris actually worked with his wife at Rockmart High School. 
and um, we were single for years, and they didn't put us together. They just didn't think to put us together. And then, um, for some reason, Pam one day said, Mark, you need to go and you need to give Chris Tammy's phone number. I think they should go out on a date. And so Chris got my phone number and he called me up and I'll never forget it. He sounded so country to me. And, uh, and there I was from Cedartown. I don't know why, but he just did. And, um, he called me and he asked me to go on a date and I said, okay. So he came and he picked me up and we went to, uh, Petro's and we had a fish dinner. Then we went to Rome, Georgia. And we went to the theater and it was really late. I mean, we were, I was 29 and he was 32, but it was really late. And I'm not a late person at all. And he said, uh, you want to see this movie? And I was like, well, I guess I can, you know? And he was like, because I knew we had to fish in a tournament the next day. I didn't think you should stay up that late. And so he thought that I might not like him very much because I said that. But we watched the movie, and it was, um, what movie was that one? It was an action movie, and it was a really good movie. But I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, so um, he brought me home, and he had the fishing tournament the next day. And I was supposed to go to Paris with my aunt an uncle and cousin and a friend of mine from uh, work. And so we left and went to Paris and we were gone for like, I want to say a week and a half or so or two weeks. I can't remember when we got back, I was jet lagged and it took me a while to call him back. So he didn't think I liked him. And, um, but I did. And so we finally got together and I mean, we were just crazy about each other. We were. We were crazy about each other. And we still are. We just, you know, I'm not used to him being home 24-7, y'all. It's, it's getting a little hard on me. <laughs> Woo! Y'all, retired women with your retired husband's going to have to give me some tips. I know y'all are. Y'all going to have to, because y'all just are. Y'all need to give me some tips. My aunt said the best tip was to send them on errands. Say, here, honey, would you please go get this, this, that, and the other, and then you have some time alone. But most of the time, Chris says, go with me. Well, ago we went to get milk. He said, go with me. I said, okay. The only thing I don't do is I don't go walking with him because I can't. So, Brenda says, I got whipped with a yardstick every day. I'm the best kid my mama had. My sister never got whipped, ha. Huh? <laughs> Sounds like you might not have been the best kid if you had to get a whooping every day. Marcia says, vacation more. I don't have time to vacation. Lord of mercy, I got two teenagers. Amy says, I need to make projects for him. He does have a few projects in line. Um, I wish you would help me with my cookbook. Now Amy's calling me. I wish you would help me with my cookbook. He helps me some. Um, hold on one second, y'all. Amy's trying to call me for some reason. Um, yes, he does. Chris has a lot to do. He stays real busy, but Chris has to stay busy. Busy, 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 busy. Um, he's a busy man. I mean, he just don't ever slow down. He don't slow down until he goes to bed. Amy needs... Hey, look. Hey, look, I gotta go. See, this is Mama for you. Amy says she's lost on the high school campus. She don't know how to get in for the show. She's already 20 minutes late. So I got to text her my brother's number. So, and I need to call my older brother back and see what he needed. And she says, please, it's so hot outside. So anyway, I guess I'm going to go. 
here, let me close this. Do y'all know that my phone is not rang all day? And the minute I get in here to talk to y'all, it has rang four times. It hasn't rang all day. Why is that? Anyway, I guess I'm going to go. Maybe the next time I come on here, I'll have something more interesting to tell y'all. Bye. I love you.